and welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Hour three on Friday. It's 9-11, 14 years since 9-11, so we're going to spend some time on that, too, in this hour. But we want to touch on some of the most important signs of the, on the news. And so, and I'd like you to kind of speed through the pathogens and the extreme weather and the uh, Godzilla version of the El Nino and the other things. Uh, but, you know, things are still rocking and rolling in terms of biosecurity and biological weapons and plausible deniability. So, in other words, the super plague is coming. Don't know when exactly, but there's lots of candidates. And uh, the Hodge is going to happen shortly, so the beta coronavirus is, is cooking. Uh, and there's hot spots in Europe, so even from beta coronavirus. So let's go through your list of, uh, of, of the good, bad, and ugly news. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the uh, the most interesting news to me was at the Pentagon news briefing yesterday. Right. Uh, the uh, the speaker uh, said that uh, yeah, CDC had reported his name, by the way, is Peter Cook. Right. Uh, he said that uh, the the uh, CDC, you know, they they said that. Um, the Pentagon, the Pentagon said they would look into the laboratories after the anthrax was spread to uh, all 50 states and uh, and other countries. Nine countries, all of them are friends, by the way, and 194 yeah, laboratories. Like, eh? <laughs> and so, th- so they tasked the CDC with that. So the CDC is doing that, and they're going to re- submit a report in October. Which isn't very far away, 30 days away or so. Right. And uh, what happened was that in the middle of this press conference, in which he did not speak about this, by the way, uh, they, 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 the reporters pounced on him and said, well, we heard that the CDC had found a situation at uh, Fort Detrick at the Edgewood facility. And uh, the the. The, what they found was that there were vials that were labeled plague and encephalitis, and they were not under control. They were in a refrigerator and uh, not behind, uh, not in the, the biosecurity level three lab so itself. So they're, be, they're, they're behind the, the V8 juice and the ham sandwiches, is what you're saying. Well, it could have been, you know. I've been in some of these labs, and after a while, the technicians get a little sloppy, you know, just like the nurses do. You know, they have to keep the vaccination, uh, the vaccine, they have to keep it at a certain temperature or below a certain temperature, but above freezing. And uh, I, they don't always do that, and then that's when the, the vaccine is ineffective. And uh, I, ha- I myself have gone around and checked labs and looked at the refrigerators and uh, put my thermometer in there and said, oh, <laughs> your temperature isn't right. And I'll throw yeah. all this stuff out. But I'd put it in my written report. I didn't say that while I was mm-hmm. there because otherwise I might have been lynched. Because, <laughs> you know, their jobs depend on them getting spending so much money for a vaccine and then... Uh, uh, charging the public for it. Well, if right. they have to throw it out and start over again, that's you know it's twice as much money. Now, one of the big ones that's coming. I get reports because I have nurses that report and they send me emails from Australia. Is that the influenza now in Australia is pretty dang nasty this year? What's going on? Yeah. Well, what happened was that the um, they think it's the type B uh, flu. Now, right. type, type B, B is flu. Not, 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 Normally type A, it's a type B, which usually, I think the 1957 flu was a type B, wasn't it? Type B is usually a mild flu. Yeah. But apparently <laughs> there is a type B in Australia that doesn't respond to the to the uh, vaccine. Now, they have the quadrivalent vaccine, and uh, they've, they've changed, uh, they've added another B. So they had a bee that was from Vietnam, and they kept that. And then they had a bee that was from Australia, and they changed it. So they changed it to a different bee. And the and the bee apparently is not covering what the people are getting. It's not strong enough. And so they're ending up with all sorts of people. Now, whether the bee changed to be a more virulent uh, virus, you know, uh, these things do happen. 
but right. normally a B virus would not cause that many uh, hospitalizations and deaths. And right. of course, it is the children and the old people that are in the hospitals and dying. It's not affecting the. You, you the, mentioned uh, something here bees. about the, the, the reconstruction of the 1918 influenza pandemic virus. Uh, they've been attempting to do this for now 60 uh, plus years. Uh, what's the yeah. story there? Well, what they did was that they they had a um, they they went you know we have a big concern because uh, well when they did when they when they looked at the 1918 Spanish influenza what they did was they went up to Alaska and they uncovered corpses and they dug around in the corpses until they found some live virus and then they carried it back to I, actually I got a little bit of a modification to that. They okay. tried to grow a live virus, and they found it was actually broken in gene fragments. So by the early 90s, they actually created gene bioengineering to reproduce it based on the use of a supercomputer to actually build the virus de novo. So they started trying to do this as early as 1954, two yeah. years after I was born, and I'm yeah. 63 and a half. So yeah. these maniacs have been trying to rebuild the 1918 virus, which is a basically a... Uh, uh, a a vaccine they're trying to make with pig blood on Fort Lupton, Kansas, and they actually had a, a basically recombinant of human and pig flu that occurred because of their experiment to make a typhus vaccine. And they tried to reproduce it because it was so effective at killing people. It was amazing. Worldwide, it's estimated that the influenza pandemic killed worldwide 100 million people. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, a lot it's of people. bad. Yeah, 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 a lot of people. Well, that's what that's what we did. But then uh, now we've you know sixty years later or 50, forty years later, we've got climate change, and what's happening is that not only is the ice melting in the Arctic, but uh, the tundra, the tundra is not melting, but it but it's thawing, and the tundra when it thaws. Uh, exposes the bodies that were buried in frozen dirt to, uh, you know, the tundra has been frozen for hundreds of thousands of years. And right. what happened was that they they were digging later. We've got climate change. And what's happening is that not only is the ice melting in the Arctic, but uh, the tundra, the tundra is not melting, but it's but it's thawing. And the tundra, when it thaws, uh, exposes the bodies that were buried in frozen dirt to, uh, you know, the tundra has been frozen for hundreds of thousands of years. And right. what happened was that they they were digging around in the tundra in Siberia, and they, right. they found at least two and maybe three viruses that are 30,000 years old or older. And we don't know anything about them other than they're big, you know, uh, they're they're <laughs> they're giant viruses, and um, they're foreign to modern life forms, so they may be very dangerous. Is what you're saying? They're like a virus from another world. Yes. Well, they are from another world. They're from from uh, uh, fifty thousand years ago. Wow. Or a hundred thousand years ago. Yeah. In and, other words, by the woolly mammoth and the saber toothed tiger. We're roaming the earth, and there were giant herds of these beasts all over the all over the northern hemisphere. Uh, these viruses were present. Yes, and we don't know what's going to happen with the uh, with these big uh, viruses. You know, hopefully they're they're culturing it in a in a uh, laboratory, a biosecurity level four. Since we don't know what it is, it should go into a biosecurity level four laboratory. And, uh, and there is, it's called molyvirus, which means uh, so, soft virus from Siberia. It, uh, it's a giant uh, virus. And not only that, they're saying that, well, this climate change could awaken even more dangerous pathogens than this. But they brought it back, and it's the fourth prehistoric virus to be found since 2003. Well, that's only, what, 12 years ago. Right. Now, by the way, the climate change uh, theory of police and carbon credits is total foolish. You have to deal with the plasma physics. So when we talk to Professor McKay at the bottom of the hour, we'll kind of get into that because Obama's in a big push on climate change and so is the Pope.
On the 25th, it's going to push Agenda 2030 and climate change. Evil, evil, evil. Updated Agenda 21. Requirements in one. There was something so pleasant about that place. Even your emotions have an echo in so much space. And when you're out there without care, yeah, I was out of touch. But it wasn't because I didn't Well, and we're back. And uh, <clears throat> tell us about this, some of these weird viruses uh, that are going on. Because what I see is a whole cadre of dangers pathogenic viruses many of them will be we call through the mixing vessel of pigs i know it's shocking for people to hear this but it's one of the things we talked about with with jonathan gray and it's one of the things that i was told 40 years ago by dr ormo hain head of hematology at dalhousie university halifax nova scotia and a senior member of phi rho sigma fraternal medical community that pigs are human animal recombinants of wild boar and human in the pre-Andalusian world, and you can actually check it with their blood group antigen type. So if you disagree with me, please just check out the facts. So they're particularly dangerous, like PERV virus and other viruses. And that's why, for example, the 1918 flu is actually a recombinant using pigs because they're a fantastic mixing vessel to create new recombinant viruses. If the PERV virus ever got what we call a receptor binding domain to attach to human cells, it could wipe out a huge chunk of humanity just by itself let alone all these other viruses that are using pigs as a mixing vessel. So it's real, real dangerous. Well, let me give you something that will scare you. It says, there have been a total of 376 swine variant infections, that means viruses, reported in the United States. Prior to 2015, which is prior to this year, almost all have been the H3N2 variant. However, three of the four cases detected this year in humans have been the less common H1N1 variant. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. That's shades of 1918 flu, which my grandmother lost a sister and a brother to it in the 1918 pandemic. Well, that's what it looks like. Because that was, H1N1 was the Spanish flu, was the 1918 pandemic. And uh, what they say is infection of swine may occur by reverse zoonosis where humans infect the swine. Or alternatively, swine may infect humans. And uh, Well, farm factory techniques are particularly dangerous when you get thousands of swine in close quarters with in, inferior hygiene, suppressed immune systems, and toxic loads in their body. So they're not healthy or happy swine. And as a result, they're more likely to become a mixing vessel for a major pathogen. Well, yeah, you have to understand that the swine that are being raised on the on the ag farms, on the, in the ag industry, are, are have nothing to do with the little pig that your grandmother may have raised. You know, they've been yeah, genetically like altered. Yeah, like a huh? pig that was a pet, for example. In fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these are these are swine that are genetically modified so that they provide enough meat to make it possible for us, for the farmers, the ag industry, to make a living on uh, raising them to, to a very, uh, for a very short time and then selling them. Yeah, very short time growing them very fast. Yes. And so they not only are, well, they probably aren't, I don't know that they're unhappy, but they certainly are under stress. And so when you get an animal that's under stress, of course they're going to mix. Well, uh, not only that, the free radical load actually starts to modify and cause what's called viral and genetic drift. So if you have a pathogen exposed to high levels of, of uh, background radiation, they found this out with the cyclotron back in Louisiana back in the 19, uh, early 1960s. Uh, when they were doing research on how to create new super pathogens, they found just literally putting a pathogen in an animal like a ferret and blasting it with uh, cobalt gamma rays would speed up the the degeneration of the virus into a super pathogen. So if an animal is under stress, it's going to speed up the viral changes of the DNA of the virus to make it more pathogenic. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. But of course, you yeah. always say it better than I could say it. And sometimes, I hope people understand sometimes too that. Fast, so, sometimes too fast and sometimes confusing. Um, 
<laughs> well, we hope now hope, hope we get the message through to people. A lot of people say, well, how do you know all this stuff? Well, how about I'm pretty dang manic. I've been driven for decades, and I have three copies of the Never Rest Gene. I have intelligent people like yourself, Anne, top experts like Joel Skousen will be on the program next week. We bring in, amalgamate this information together, so when you walk away, you say, I know what's going on in the world better. I know what's going on in my body better. I know what's going on with finances better, and I now can prep. Because believe me, the global agenda isn't just to crash the world economy. It's really super plagues on the earth. And a lot of these super plagues will have what appears to be plausible deniability like these SARS. Who knows if they've upgraded at some lab and then they're going to release it just in time for the Hajj or just afterward. I don't know. But I can tell you that if you take these organisms and put them out in the wild, they will bond spontaneously on their own become more deadly. Uh, yes, on their own. In fact, the birds are are mm. making the uh, bird flu more deadly. Uh, right, you know, just by just, their migration patterns and their the environment's degraded, so they're more likely to have sick animals. They're going to have more viral uh, replication and cross linking, or cross infecting of of regular, you know, birds for chickens and so on. That's why in Iowa. And in Minnesota, the turkeys in Minnesota, it's the biggest turkey area, the biggest egg-laying area is Iowa. Their farm areas are just decimated this summer. Uh, people don't realize that we are entering, I call it the Joseph period, the seven lean years, you know, the prophecy of the, of the Pharaoh of Egypt. We're now entering oh, yeah. that seven years now after the Shemitah, or wipeout. And as I said before, not only the ceiling is 144,000, but the full force famine both of capital, credit, and of food starts this month. Not next year, not 10 years from now, this month. And people need to better be aware. They better start having a greenhouse on the side of their house. They better start storing food. They better be prepared for food prices going skyrocket and commodities going nuts. It's going to get ugly, ugly, ugly. And it's all by design, by the way, because a lot of these things... When I met with the head of the CDC and FBI in terms of bioterrorism with Operation Top Off in Dark Winter in 2001, March, and asked them, do they follow the recommendations I gave with Reserve Admiral Hughes, because I was his point man on Operation Top Off in Dark Winter, not one of my recommendations they followed. I got so disgusted with these guys. I do not have any respect for the government or their minions, and they have lots of minions. There are some good people there, but they're usually disabled or shoved aside, or demoted, or suppressed. Because if you start rocking the boat, you're never going to get a senior position in any department of the government. Well, that's right. You have to know how to get along in order to... Getting uh, along means not doing your job. Getting along <laughs> means not telling the truth. Getting along means covering things up. Getting along means being involved with conspiracies. And <clears throat> the Dragon Nation of America, the 9-11, has this conspiracy cooking of a major pathogenic release... And believe me, when it happens, the best, and I tell people this over and over and over again, yeah, a, a blackout with a CME will decimate the country, and there's some pastors that are pushing it. But the most deadly thing that will bring about full martial law is a super pathogen. There's nothing to compare, even nuclear war. Nothing will cause more havoc than a major super pathogen like the 1918 flu. They'll have martial law so quick and people will cooperate so much, roll up the sleeve, give me whatever it is, even if it's radioactive. So I won't die and my wife won't die. That's what people will do. Visit GCNlive.com today. And, uh, and Morrison, our scientist, is here and we have Professor McKinney. Professor McKinney, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. These are 9-11 questions. I presented um, in the 9-11 Truth Conference in 2007 40 anomalies that proved that 9-11 was an inside job that was a nuclear demolition with RDX. Uh, the video company in Oregon that actually videotaped it actually refused to provide me with my videos. I presented not only that talk, but I did other talks, including with uh, uh, other people talks on other topics, especially including things like depleted uranium and how it affects specific metabolic pathways, etc. Uh, I had actually threatened to sue them to get my material, uh, my videos. In fact, they were not going to give it to me. It was like fighting with them for six months until finally I said, that's it. I'm suing you. And I got it. Now, 9-11, 
The current we call terrorists a boogeyman, because remember now, the bankers have to have a boogeyman. Their per- perfect boogeyman is so-called extreme Islam. And I was reading Joel Skousen's report here in the uh, second segment of hour number two, and people need to start grasping this, that 9-11 was not only an inside job, but so was ISIS. And ISIS pre, uh, basically going to precede a terrorist activity that will be a geometric expression uh, amplified far worse than 9-11, probably in a major U.S. city, like a radiological bomb or biological bomb or something terrible. And the problem is because we haven't faced Oklahoma City and then before that Ruby Ridge, we faced 9-11, and because we haven't had truth-telling and think it's, quote, a conspiracy theory and you're a nut, Bob, if you talk about 9-11 as an inside job or that the government did it when Dick Cheney is literally talking about this and Normanetta is there, one of the senators, actually in a bunker and asking the question, you know, are you going to do anything about this approaching so-called uh, airlines jet, which, by the way, there's absolutely no proof from the FAA. There's absolutely no proof that a jet actually struck the Pentagon. And um, We've even had experts on that actually worked in the Pentagon and saw parts of jets a month before... Uh, laid on on a floor in a section of the building near the area that was just hardened by a British contractor with titanium girders and Kevlar windows. Uh, and it was an area where the accounting was being done for Dov Zockheim of the comptroller's office where $2.3 trillion with a T dollars disappeared that was apparently going for the Pentagon. Now, $2.3 trillion is hard to lose where it is. So when you're looking at what the government's doing in terms of their scrambling over the world currencies, and you see the outbreak of all these weird viruses and bacteria we've talked about with Anna in the first half of this hour, we have not, collectively as a nation, learned our lesson of 9-11, and we're going to pay shortly. I am very skeptical, especially with the array of what I call fools and hemi-fools, in both the Republican and Democratic Party, if there will even be a 2016 election. I think that it's possible, I'm not going to say this prophetically, it's possible that Obama and the global bankers and manipulators behind him want to have such a terrorist activity occur that they will, of course, they're going to try to say they're whacking ISIS, which in fact is ISIS is a manufactured entity where if they get hurt, they go to an Israeli hospital. That's why they're not, Israelis aren't taking any refugees. They're taking in the ISIS people, though, to help them if they get hurt. How come ISIS people get taken care of in Israeli hospitals, huh? How does that happen? Oh, it was so, a uh, it was a <clears throat> setup from the beginning. Right. <clears throat> when when John Kerry went over there, he said, uh, "We're not going to do anything," uh, and and uh, that's what happened. They just let this whole thing run on purpose. Right. And then they go, "Well, gee, maybe we should think about doing something now." Uh, you know, it was all fabricated, and they all knew it. Right. It's now, all the CIA, another one, just like uh, and of course you know, this month also the Taliban in, and the, you know the whole laundry list of boogeymen. Right, right after, by the way, Obama meets the Pope. He's heading to Alaska to actually talk about climate change and the melting of the permafrost and all the other things. Uh, now this gets into plasma physics because it's not just our planet that's losing its polar ice cap. So is Mars. There's also signs of thermal changes and changes in radiation output from Jupiter and other planets caused by deep space effects of what's called gravity waves. And you do not need a comet as large as the hale bop four times Earth masses or whatever to have gravity waves from deep space start to change the, bio, the plasma physics and the nucleonics of large planetary objects. Basically, most of our inner planets are actually nuclear reactors. The Earth is a nuclear reactor with a crust on it. And the magnetosphere is actually created by this rotating plasma field of nuclear isotopes around a solid iron core. That's how it's created. They've actually done this in the lab, too. So if you think it's not possible, they've actually recreated the ability to create a five-layered uh, radiation belt, you know, magnetic radiation belt around the uh, a, even a planetary-style style object. So when you see the melting of the, pl- of the of not only our planet, but other planets of the permafrost and weird climate changes is due to interactions of two things, uh, plasma and solar f- plasma physics, and weather manipulation by global maniacs, including the World Constitution, Parliament Association, and the United Nations, and affiliate nations as black op, above government technology, need to know kind of garbage by the NSA and other affiliate agencies of other foreign governments, the British, the Canadians, etc. 
So what do you think uh, about climate change? When you hear all this Obama stuff and a Pope, the uh, oh my God Pope, the Antichrist Pope, is going to declare Agenda 21, upgrade to Agenda 30, is what we need. This is what we need. And he's getting rid of dogma and replaced it with, we're going to help the poor. How about if you really want to help the poor, sell off all your assets, Vatican, because you control the World Bank system. All the Sabbatean Satanistic Jews with their kippahs are completely under control of the Jesuits. People need to know that. They don't, do they? No, no, it's... uh it's incredible that people still are not aware of that, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, the, the clock is ticking here, and you know, the, <clears throat> the dates they picked for this are very much related to <clears throat> uh, ancient calendars, it's uh, numerology, um, it's star the, signs, and ancient Hebrew feast days, that's why even the number 911, oh. these are satanic numbers. Mm-hmm. They're using yeah. what's called Kabbalism, and the summoning of demonic uh, transdimensional entities in order to control the timeline of the future of this planet. People said, no, they wouldn't do that. I said, you're a fool. That's why I was watching a program on Nova, and I'd like to ask you this question. They talk about the arrow of time. The arrow of time is created by consciousness. I mean, anybody, even with, with quantum theory, realizes that when you change... When you change the point of observation, you actually change... Quantum theory actually includes consciousness as part of quantum theory, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, time is a, um, uh, Einstein used to joke and say that's it's a construct so, so that not, not everything happens at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, what, what, he, what he really should say is we, are a, we live in a holographic universe and the passage of the, of, the, of the soul or the collective consciousness of the sentient beings of our universe moves forward in a forward timeline to create the illusion of change which we should call time. So the present, the past, and the future are all coexistent. And Einsteinian and post-Einsteinian theory proves that. But, of course, the fools don't want to accept the fact that the higher dimensions are what's called negentropic, and they actually create the entropic and negentropic level of the universe. Some fools say even it's the decay of the, of the primary event of the Big Bang and that entropy is decreasing in the universe. What about negentropic events, the creation of a new baby, the creation of a tree, uh, a new if you want to call it recreation of, a, of an organism into a higher form that we've seen archaeologically right through history. Uh, science can't explain that, can it, when it talks about entropic levels and the Big Bang. These people are fools. Well, nope. the, um, the issue with uh, ISIS, I believe, is very real. And, yeah, uh, and they're going to do something bad to us yet yeah, next, yeah. aren't they? They've talked about oh. blowing up a radiological bomb in Chicago already. Openly said they're going to actually take people with Ebola and bring them to America and strap on body bombs and blow them up in public places. They said it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is, uh, once again, all CIA stuff. The, sure it is. This is CIA. Either. It's got I to maintain a boogeyman to do it to take away all our rights and have the surveillance, and it fits in perfectly now with... Windows 7 and 8 now, not just Windows 10, which is coming, which nobody should upload. Windows 7 and 8 are snooping on everything we do. Even these uh, things like, you know, television uh, boxes like DirecTV and so on, they have 2A sound and audio and pictures. Believe it or not. Back in a minute. So, Professor McKinney, on 9-11, you can tell with the laws of conservation of mass and energy that the World Trade Center was demolished. We, uh, even Joel Skousen and his reports and many other so-called 9-11 truthers, know that fact. It wasn't done with a directed energy weapon. The heating of the planet isn't due to carbon credits. In fact, it's a carbon-based world system. And the carbon capture technology of the World Constitution Parliament Association with Dr. Isley, who is a physicist and owner of the Vitamin Cottage and founder in 1958 of the World Constitution Parliament Association and the Federation of Earth Documents, which he's given me back in 1997, in March. And, uh, so in 1997, it was no younger, earlier in March, it was around July. 
the fact is what we're dealing with here is they're getting us ready for another what I call major psycho cybernetic and biological and economic attack against the populations of Earth. And the situation in Syria is going to get very nasty. We have to start remembering and understanding that I tell people, get out of the big cities, get away from downline nuclear reactors, air, air uh, reactors, get yourself subsistent to be able to, to get water and food, be ready for a possible use of not protecting ourselves against a cybernetic attack by the Tianjin Blue Army or anybody else from Iran or whatever on our, our grid. Because as Obama and the global power corporations push for more smart meters, which aren't smart, they make us more vulnerable. Uh, they increase the chances of us, what's called the ultimate, uh, I call weapon of indignation that will literally stop our. Up dead before your nose breaks when you hit the ground. That's what's going to happen to our society. And of course, the globalists want that. They want America to fall. They want America to be a desolate place. They want a global order where all the other nations of the earth are vassals and they killed off 90% of the world population. And 9-11 is a warning sign. It's telling us if you don't listen to these, heed these warnings, they're going to unleash ISIS in its full fury, controlled by the British and American banks and so on in the West, and it's full fury. And a few people like Putin are actually mentioning the truth. It's disturbing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, Putin knows those people have blocked... Uh, access uh, from the United States. They've they've closed their borders. They don't allow food from the United States. They don't allow anything coming into their country from the West, literally. Uh, they've uh, moved their economic yeah. basis off into certain other countries. They're just, they're just preparing for this because they see it coming also. Uh, but they've been protecting their, right, their But here in America, country. we don't need to do that. If yeah, and of course we see a lot of the uh, what we call meddlesome agencies. You had contact, you sent me about a, a Christian organization on a 10-acre area that the IRS are harassing because of a previous owner of the land had some kind of IRS problems. And uh, they're trying to literally tell them to put down all their animals and leave the land in yep. Florida. Yep. This is an example yeah, of an out-of-control government that wants total surveillance and will abuse you until eventually they take all your money in the banks, bail it in, destroy the currency to wipe out their debts and have total control of you with you chipped, tracked, and in a matrix. Well, yeah, and the, from what I understand of the group in Florida, a woman came out and told them to do this. There was no document. There was no court order. There was nothing. This is just, she goes, I'm from the IRS. You've got to kill all your animals and get out of here by October 1st. We're going to uh, track that, in, that entire story uh, and get more information. I was going to try and have them on in, uh, the air today, but uh, uh, communication is a little difficult at this point, but we're, we're going to work on doing that. But that's very typical. Right. By the way, of, in today's news, uh, the Mecca, the 87 were killed in the crane collapse at the Mecca's Grand Mosque. I guess they're building this giant mosque there, and 87 people were killed, uh, were injured, uh, people are in, injured, 184 others, besides the 87 that were killed by this giant crane crashing. And where was this? In, uh, this is in uh, Mecca, Majid al-Haram, or the Grand oh, okay. Mosque, they call it. Oh, okay. I was what people should start today. to grasp here is... Yeah, go ahead. I was looking today at the well, pictures... What we have to do to focus in the last few minutes here is we have, we have a situation where, Professor McKinney, we have scientific minds like yours and Anne's, mine, we have facts on the ground. We have people like myself that had security clearance and work with these people inside the government personally. And there's a lot of people listening that are good people in various agencies, including in uh, these other agencies that we talk about that are so evil collectively, like the FBI and CIA. Uh, the fact is that the government is more concerned about them going rogue and leaving their agency. I remember talking to someone from uh, Lucent Technology who had created the security uh, protocols and the targeting technology software in Littleton, Colorado for a long-range uh, ship-launched uh, Harpoon uh, nuclear-tip missiles. It's other technologies from space-based weapon systems. And he had already said that they had put worms in the system, so if they thought things were going wrong with the attitude and the actions of the government, they would disable the weapon systems 
so that they would no longer be able to be operational in any way, shape, or form. So there's good people out there that are basically, how can I say, behind the scenes, quietly, completely ticked off, fully informed, and not and pretending that they really don't know these things because they don't want to lose their job or their life. And I tell people, you need to stop being silent and you just need to start being vocal because they're ready to pull it off now. When the Pope is coming out clearly to tell him he supports world government, when he's getting rid of dogma, when he's trying to amalgamate all the Abrahamic religions, when you see the world economy crashing, and you see we're 14 years, two sevens, and we're ending up in a few days with the Shemitah year, and this is 9-11-2015, if you don't take notice now, I'm not going to say God help you, because he has. He said, you listen to this program, he said, you check out the facts yourself, you need to wake up and smell the coffee. This is not the uh, a future prophecy of the end decades or years or months away. The end has started today. Today the yeah. end has started. Yeah, the, you look at the pictures of the um, the buildings coming down. I looked again today at the Pentagon building. Uh, absolutely no airplane at all there. Uh, the two buildings in New York, the towers, the two main towers, when they came down, they were pulverized into dust before they hit the ground. Right. Uh, well, you know, yeah, they, they were buildings. turned into they were basically paramagnetic materials. Yeah, like like the steel girders and the paramagnetic columns because it contained water. Concrete is a paracrystalline liquid. It's actually classified as a slow flowing paracrystalline liquid. It takes several centuries for it to move, but believe it or not, technically, concrete is a paracrystalline liquid. It just moves, it, it takes centuries or millennia to move. But it's not technically a solid. Interesting, isn't it? And because it has yeah, such it, a high water content, if it gets hit with a nuclear weapon, those water molecules immediately hit 50 to 100,000 degrees when the X-rays and the high energy gamma particles, etc., strike them, neutrons, <coughs> and they immediately raise the temperature of those girders and those concrete you want to call major supports in the center of the building to basically superheated steam at thousands of uh, atmospheres of pressure. So that's why all the particles were turned to dust instantly. They had a poof. Where are the buildings? Mm -hmm. Oh, where did the radio tower go? Well, it was turned into a vapor. What does mm -hmm. that? Only nuclear weapons. Period. Well, yeah, and this is the anniversary. Uh, uh, just um, you know, they, they, I I looked on the internet too, and it's been completely cleansed. The only thing there that you'll find if you look for nine eleven are the honorariums for the people who died. And oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna. They're not going to talk even about the toxic effects in the lower population of Manhattan. They're not going to talk about the rescue technology we used to try to detox people. I was involved with the 911 rescue committee is trying to develop new technology to pull the heavy metals, radio toxins, and chemicals out of them because they get exposed to asbestos, they get exposed to radio toxins, and they get exposed to nanoparticles. And a lot of, by the way, 5,000 tons in each building of uh, chlorinated biphenyls, dioxins, and dibenzofurans. That directly blocks the 5 methylfolate reductase enzyme and literally is like putting you on chemo. They put the planet on chemo with 9 11, believe it or not. So, out there, if you think you disagree with Dr. Deagle, have the nerve and the guts this day or any day, on the show, or off air, or whatever, to challenge me. It'll be a dark day for you intellectually. And if you don't take action, if you think 9-11 was bad, guess what? This maniac government and the dark forces behind them, they're going to make the next events with ISIS, which they are managing, they're their our bad dog, a lot worse than 9-11. So wake up and take action. The end is today.